now i welcome dr arvin and mr sunil meena for the garlanding national milk day is celebrated on 26 november to pay tribute to dr varges kuren bodhi who bought the white revolution and made the dairy farm the largest self sustaining industry in india to honor his contribution the ministry of animal husbandry and dairy first celebrated national milk day on 26 november 2014 विवेक सौरभ है विवेक सौरभ है उसके सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग फर्दर मिनट आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल डॉक्टर विवेक मिस्टर विवेक सौरभ नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आईसा न्यू दिल्ली टू एड्रेस दिस ओकेजन हेलो यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल यू कैन कंटिन्यू थैंक यू ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर जॉन डेविड सर professor anil k chauhan sir and other dignitaries a voice speaker organizing committee members and the attendees good morning to all of you it is an honor to speak before you this webinar innovative approaches in dairy and food industries and employment opportunities is being organized on the national milk day 2023 by aisa dsft ias bhu varanasi shwets prayagraj Indian Dairy Association Eastern UP chapter and Golgotia University Noida The webinar is organized with the aim to aware students and the milk producers about the new processing technology and approaches to achieve better quality in dairy and food products while saving energy and the nutritional attributes for the development of health products in dairy and food sector by utilizing functional ingredients In addition dedicated session is included in the webinar to aware about employment and entrepreneurship opportunities in this sector as many attendees are still not a member of aisa let me introduce it in brief aisa is a professional organization of present and former students in the field of agriculture veterinary dairy horticulture fisheries forestry home science agriculture abm and all other allied science, uh, agriculture subjects 
The association was formally launched on 2011 by the Honorable Union Minister of State for Agriculture. ISA envisioned a common platform for agriculturists, technocrats, and bureaucrats to collaborate and work together for the betterment of Indian agriculture. Our vision is to promote the application of science in agriculture, which, in, which is often left back. We firmly believe that by placing the right person in the right place can revolution, revolutionize the agriculture sector. At present, the ISA has more than 60,000 registered members, and ISA is continuously working for their welfare and resolving their problems with all of our units and chapters. Once again, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of you for joining us today. Let us make the most of this opportunity to learn and grow together. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are Hello. Hello. Sir, now you can start. Okay. Okay. Uh, very uh, good uh, morning from the core of my heart. I think my shorts. Alhabad. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you are audible. Yeah, fine. Visible. Both we need to be audible and visible online. Okay, uh, friends, greetings uh, for this very uh, pious occasion, I should say. And I'm glad to be here today for the National Milk Day. 1923, organized by ISA friends, IDA friends, DHU friends, Calcutta's, Schwartz, and our great fraternity of food and dairy take all over the land. Today we observe the National Milk Day, commemoration of the memory of the great legendary person. We all know Dr. Bargis Kurian, because of him only we are here today. It's a great occasion to be celebrated with much gaiety and fanfare. I'd like to tell you, Michigan State University, USA, where Dr. Kurian completed the master's MS in mechanical engineering before coming back to India. They have even placed a bus stop, Dr. Kurian, in the administrative building of Michigan State University, which we should follow the steps, our Indian brethren also. Yeah, legendary man. And 
when you talk about a legendary man then we must be humble ourselves down before his dedication his contribution for the land dr korean is not confined to particular state of kerala where he has been born but is in personality because he lived and died in the state of gujarat what is gujarat today in terms of a dairy sector it is 100% single handed labor dedication of dr vargis kurian who lived there up to his last breath you know he came uh, alabad uh, some of you may be knowing that he was first chancellor of alabad central university generally the post of chancellor belongs to honorable president of india but honorable president of india was delighted to offer this post to dr kurian as the chancellor of central university of allahabad and he occupied the post till his last breath so it's great honor one of the rare honor one day he visited our institution shorts and i uh, was uh, showing him our facilities our dairy plants and things like that dr kurian said uh, you are the pioneer but what is uh, lacking in you that you are sliding back i said sir you are true the first dairy farm in india that is in alahabad the first cooperative milk union that is started in alahabad first cross breeding program of cattle started in alahabad first dairy education in india and southeast asia that is in alahabad probably that time sir we were selfless dedicated people and now maybe we became self centered he smiled dr kurian smiled i remember uh, before death he visited our uh, institution and there was a brief interaction with the great personality what i achieved in my life face to face uh, talked with him interacted with him now coming to the topic let me put the slides Uh, what is that? I had slides, and then uh, sir, on slide shares the screen. You can go. Okay. Uh, From there, you can share your slide. is it visible my slides no sir no i don't no 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 now you are uh, permitted for slide share you can share now sir okay okay now no hello it is not uh, visible to us sir pause karke jao chapak sir you can go ahead without slide if possible because share with us then it is pause karke niklo fir share karo jaisa share karo pause karo kal jao fir yahan pe jo share karne wale hai okay and not able to see Share screen. Okay. Okay. Now your screen is visible. You can open the PPT. Yeah, please. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I maximize it, sir, on your screen. Is it visible now? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the presence. Uh, so we are continuing with discussion. That was the general uh, part of uh, uh, our event today, the Milk Day. We are observing, commemorating the celebrations of Honorable, the great prestigious man of Indian milk man, father of white revolution, 
Dr. Ovar Biskuria. Uh, the topic is very much uh, contemporary, what you have chosen. Uh, I have little, a little bit of uh, here and there uh, divisions, but we will be concentrating on the topic. So this is the topic, innovative strategies in the interdisciplinary sector, exploring the growth and employment avenues. Dr. Maris Kurian, as I shared earlier, a legendary man who lived for the land, not for himself. Often I teach my students, uh, Dr. Uh, milk is above caste, creed, and color. You go to any household, uh, if you ask what is the caste of the milk, then people will laugh at you. Oh, milk is uh, welcome in every house, Hindu, Muslim, and Christian everywhere in the world. Equally honored. Simply, the name of Burgess Kurian above all names, above cast in color and creed in India. A legendary man who lived for the land, who lived for the dreary fraternity, who lived for the white revolution. We'll a little bit uh, rushing through these topics. So moving on. So introductions we'll do, then developments, industrial aspects, and employment opportunities, skill development initiative, and future outlook and FLO. So milk, as I see, as I tell you, this is a lifeline for the humanity. No milk, no humanity. Milk is the first ordained food above all food given by the Almighty to humankind. Whether you're poor country or rich country, up to USA, whatever you men mentioned, the milk stands as a supreme food to begin our life with. In India, we are the most proud nation because we produce the largest quantity of milk. And at present, we have 222, two, two, that is 222 mm, million metric tons, a huge a mammoth production of milk. That fetched as the first rank. India is the number one producer, milk producer in the world now. A matter to be proud. The dairy industry in India was valued rupees. 14,899.8 billion in 22. It's difficult uh, to understand the amount. Their industry in India growth rate is 13.2%, uh, 23 to 28 onwards, and their industry in India forecast further income of rupees 31,185.7 billion. And with those are from UP, we'll be very happy to know that UP is the number one contributor in Indian milk production of 222 MMT. Our share from UP is 18% of the milk production in India. So the largest share. Now we talk about development. 1950, we started our journey. That three years, 47 to 50, almost there were no organizations. That was very shaky. From 1950, we count everything. And there we stand at 17, 1, 7 million tons of milk, very minor. 17, 1, 7 MT. And now today we are 220 MMT, million metric ton. What a quantum jump. Mammoth production from nowhere on the top. A great achievement. We must be uh, thankful for our dairy fraternity, dairy farmers, dairy industrialists, everyone for the contribution in this 222 million metric, million metric tons of milk. And our capital income, where milk was very dirty in the beginning, during our independence, pre-independence period, today we have 444 four, four gram. That's a very quite good amount, around, around a half a liter per capita at present time. We'll see industrial aspects for a few minutes. Oh. Basically, India is predominantly dairy farming community. 
from the initiation of our culture, which we received back from the Harappa and Mahanjadaro culture, maybe 5000 BC, there we see the monograms of cattle and they were rearing cattle. So from very initiation, India is a dairy farming community. But we are no till the great white revolution initiated and matured by Dr. Varghese Kurian. Now we are a tech giant. We have all latest facilities, ultra-modernized dairy plants, automatic milking machines, sensors, blockchains, automatic feeders, artificial intelligence, probiotic food, high protein dairy beverages, and so many I can I cannot mention in a very short time. If you want to know them, visit Dairy Expo. Every student, every professional must visit Dairy Expo, which is a number of times been held in our land, India, as well as outside also. So there you can see how much India progresses in the industrial revolution in terms of food and dairy technology sector. And you will be overwhelmed to see the progress. Last time I was there in an dairy industry conference in Gandhinagar last year, and I have seen some of the latest gadgets, what we are using on dairy. And that was... So sorry, to, so sorry to interrupt you in between, but we are short of time. So could you please brief us your presentation? Yeah, yeah, sure. Few minutes more. So employment opportunities, we have employment opportunity, major, mainly in the dairy farm sector, which we overlooked, milk processing and quality assurance in the dairy industry sector, and research and development is from the academia sector. I wish that much more interface should be there between academia and the industry, which is still lacking. Future outlook, our prospect should be focusing on technological integration, market expansion, and sustainable growth. And now we need skill development initiatives, various training programs, short courses, long courses, maybe for fortnight, maybe for one month, so that our fraternity may grow better. Basically, the dairy farming community, those who are uh, not aware of the present trends, education, partnership, PP model, work at the end. We produce 222 uh, MMT metric tons of milk, huge quantity, but we should be a little honest with the consumer. Milk which is safe with animals, it is unsafe with the human beings, how do you handle it? The problem of adulteration is very much there. Now, the milk which is God given food, why should we dilute when only 13 to 70 percent solids are there, and milk already full of water, 83 to 87 percent of water. So please be a little honest with the consumer. Let's produce quality of milk. Milk quality should be supreme. Milk is the life breathing medicine, drug, food, whatever you can say. It is everything for humanity. So let us produce quality of milk, not only qu quantity of milk. Quantity is here. there. And thirdly, we are looking for employment opportunity. Please focus to be a job provider than to be job seeker. What I mean, I have advised my students, why not you uh, follow up some entrepreneurship program? And I probably can tell you, the students, those who are having entrepreneurship, a dairy business, everyone earning 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs bracket right there at home. So it is a golden opportunity for everyone. Thank you for listening to me. Wish you all a successful milk day. One place, no adulteration in milk. That should be a befitting reply, the homage, the tribute to Honorable Dr. Varghese Kuria. Thank you. Jai Bharat. Thank you so much, sir. And wish you to a successful National Milk Day. Your presentation was very insightful. Due to some region, Prof. Senior Professor Dr. Anil Kumar Chauhan, Head of Dairy Science and Food Technology Department, Banaras Hindu University, could not be with us. So now I'd like to call Dr. Tarun Verma, sir, Secretary of Indian Dairy Association in the Eastern UP chapter to address the occasion. Please, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. 
and uh, welcome students good morning all of you myself dr tarun verma assistant professor in this department i welcome you all on behalf of indian dairy association ida i am the secretary of indian dairy association and dr arvin is the chairman of uh, ida eastern up chapter so students first i want to wish you a happy national milk day on the eve of this 26 november 2023 varghis kurian ji ke janm upalakshya mein jo hum log aaj ye celebration kar rahe hain to indian dairy association usse bahut bada judav hai aaj sabse bada hamare kuch khushkhabri ki baat hai ki ye bhi hai ki 75va saal ye pura ho raha hai 75 year hamara complete ho raha hai ye hamara bada achievement hai ki 75 year successfully 1948 mein idea establish hua tha iske headquarter delhi mein hai uske several branches hain तो भी आप अब सोचे कि अच्छा आप लोग बच्चे लोग का मेन इंटरेस्ट क्या है कि सेमिनार कॉन्फ्रेंस या जो भी आप वेबिनार हो रहा है मेन आपके क्या इंटरेस्ट है आपको जॉब जॉब के लिए देखिए एक दो शब्द होता है मन कोई भी काम को मन लगा के कर लो ठीक है तो मन लगा करने के लिए मन के आगे पहले न लगा दिए क्या होता है नमन मन के आगे लास्ट न लगा दिए तो क्या होता है मनन तो आपको कोई काम मन लगा आपको सफलता पानी है तो पहले आपको उसको नमन करना होगा फिर मनन करके अपना प्रयास करना होगा अपना दीपक स्वयं जलाना होगा आपको आप ये आशा छोड़ दीजिए कि आपके लिए कोई आ, सुनील मीना या तरुण वर्मा जैसे वो होंगे अवतार पैदा होंगे जो आपके लिए प्रैक्टिस करेंगे और आपको एकदम कंपनी आप खाली बैठी आपको आगे नौकरी दे देंगे आपका प्रयास जरूरी आपने कितने प्रयास आप कितना मन लगा के आपने नमन किया है कितना मनन से आपने प्रयास किया है ये जरूरी है तो इंडियन डेरी एसोसिएशन आपको कैसा प्लेटफॉर्म देता है आपसे मैंने कई बार बोला अब आप सोचो कि इंडियन डेरी एसोसिएशन से जुड़े और हमको नौकरी मिल जाए ऐसा कोई गारंटी भी नहीं है एक डेरी एसोसिएशन है कोई भी चीज मजबूत कब बनता है आप डेयरी के फील्ड के हो आप फूड के फील्ड के हो आपने कोरोना में देखा सब इंडस्ट्रिया बंद हो गई केवल कोई इंडस्ट्री चली मैक्सिमम में फार्मा इंडस्ट्री चली और डेयरी इंडस्ट्री चली बहुत सी फूड इंडस्ट्रिया भी बंद हो गई तो डेयरी का मतलब स्कोप बहुत अच्छा है आगे है आप इस एसोसिएशन से जुड़ते हो तो आपको क्या है एक बड़ा प्लेटफॉर्म मिलता है आपकी एकता में ही ताकत है जब आप एक हो गए आप एक दूसरे से मिलोगे सेमिनार कॉन्फ्रेंस पूजन जब होता है वहां आपको जाना है और एक दूसरे को जोड़ना है इसलिए मैं आपसे आग्रह करता हूं कि आप लोग इस एसोसिएशन के महत्व को समझिए ये महत्व को समझने में आपको समझ आप स्टूडेंट के लिए हमारी मेंबरशिप फीस भी बहुत कम है आपको वन टाइम प्लस सेवन प्लस जीएसटी देना होता है बस आपका चार साल का कोर्स है तो चार साल के लिए आपका दो साल का कोर्स है तो साल के लिए तो इतनी कम ऑर्डनरी फीस तेरह सौ के आसपास में है लाइव मेंबरशिप आप बाद में जब आप जॉब पे चले जाओगे तब आप ले सकते हो लेकिन आप एक एसोसिएशन से अपने आप को आप फूड के तो फूड से भी जोड़ो डेयरी से भी जोड़ो आप डेयरी को कम से कम डेयरी से जरूर जोड़ के रखिए इससे आप क्या है एक्टिविटी आपको पता चलती रहेगी क्या चीजें हो रही हैं और कैसे चीजें चल रही है तो ये आपके लिए बहुत ही जरूरी है और इसी के साथ साथ मैं ढेर सारी शुभकामनाएं देखता हूँ डॉक्टर सुनील मीना और उनकी ऐसा टीम और जितने भी इस संस्था इससे जुड़े हुए हैं बहुत बहुत बधाई इतना एक शानदार वेबिनार कराने के लिए इंडियन डेयरी एसोसिएशन को इतने बड़े प्लेटफॉर्म मंच तक पहुंचाने के लिए सुनील मीना को मैं हार्दिक धन्यवाद देता हूं और साथ ही डेयरी एसोसिएशन की तरफ से बहुत ही शुभकामनाएं देता हूं कि आपने इतना अच्छा प्रयास किया और अंत में आप सभी से भी निवेदन है कि आप सब लोग जरूर मन लगा के नमन करिए और मनन करिए और एसोसिएशन से जुड़िए तभी आप सफलता को प्राप्त कर पाएंगे इतना छोटा अमाउंट आप घर में रेस्टोरेंट में भी खाना खाने जाते होंगे तो भी खर्चा कर देते हो इसमें आपको लाइफ टाइम के लिए कम से कम जब तक आप स्टूडेंट हो चार साल का कोर्स है दो साल का कोर्स है तब तो तक आपको उस कोर्स के लिए वन टाइम फीस लगती है और आपको रेगुलर अपडेट रहते हैं चीजों से धन्यवाद हेलो प्रिया आर यू ऑडिबल यस नाउ यू कैन स्टार्ट थैंक यू सर फॉर एनलाइटिंग अस विद योर वर्ड्स नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल डॉक्टर सहदेवा सिंह हु इज प्रेजेंटली डीन एंड चीफ ऑफिसर चीफ पॉलिसी एडवाइजर आयसा ही हैज वर्क्ड अबाउट 33 इयर्स इन वेरियस 
capacities including deputy commissioner and head policy and planning commission of india so please So please unmute yourself. Doctor Sir Deva Sir, can you please hear me and please unmute yourself? Sir, now you have unmuted yourself. Could you please start? Yes, please. Actually, yes. host is not. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. I was not able to <laughs> unmute from my side, so now it's okay. Fine. Uh, very nicely uh, uh, told uh, the information database uh, by Professor uh, John David and uh, other speakers also uh, told the importance of this seminar on this National Milk Day. And uh, it's uh, the topic has been nicely chosen, innovative approaches in dairy and food uh, industries. And uh, basically, the focus uh, is on uh, uh, that is uh, production aspect, dairy aspect, and employment. So production aspect, uh, we are leading in the world. And um, we need to ensure the involvement of youth in uh, dairy sector. And uh, now we talk about a lot about uh, smart farming, smart uh, dairy farming, digitization, supply chain, blockchain, where the youth have to be involved in this aspect. And uh, they need the short-term uh, skill development training, especially in development sector, industrial sectors, uh, uh, besides the academic institution, uh, normal training they are getting so that uh, they become uh, capable to initiate their uh, program and to involve themselves in this uh, uh, great uh, supply chain where they can be fitted themselves. Many of the industries where uh, even uh, the persons who are not uh, in the dairy sector have worked uh, or educated, they are running the dairy but if our youth who are themselves involved in dairy and uh, agriculture, they can themselves can be fitted well if they get support uh, from the uh, institution side, industrial side, and they, they get the good uh, short term training, uh, skill development, and uh, they can be involved in the digitization process and uh, uh, many of the new aspect. Uh, in uh, breeding aspect, uh, production aspect, distributions where they can be fitted. Now, a lot of research have been carried out, uh, uh, like institution like NDRI, that's where for enhancement of production, they have developed the clones. Similarly, at uh, uh, small dairy sectors also, or uh, even middle uh, dairy sectors also, they can initiate this process for enhancing the milk production. And uh, further in uh, distribution chain also, uh, smart uh, kiosk or a small level uh, cluster approach can be adopted and uh, the group which can involve themselves in uh, supply chain management that is very important where there is a good scope for youth uh, uh, getting em uh, employment besides uh, the production aspect. So all these uh, aspects need to be taken care of and uh, the academic institution need to make a good approach with industry so that youth can be involved in uh, short-term industrial training and also in, during their final year of uh, 
dairy degree program and agriculture students or dairy students they can work uh, uh, to uh, further um, enhance the our production distributions and uh, as this sector is contributing 5% in gdp and about 10 uh, crore populations involved in dairy sector uh, in the country and our country is leading there is a good scope there we can have uh, the involvement of youth in uh, product development distribution further and uh, focus should be on uh, smart dairy farming uh, that should be the approach for uh, youth empowerment thank you very much So, can we please progress? Yes, please. Thank you so much, sir, for your insightful knowledge. Now, I'd like to call Mr. Asmis Sukla, who is the who is the ISA president of UP. Uh, UP. Please proceed, sir. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Asmis Sukla, State President. I Asmith, you are unmuted. Sir, please unmute yourself. And other events. Our national president described about want to add more. AISA advocates for the resolution of long pending issues, including the creation of all of, of Indian agriculture services to ensure the appointment of Ensure the, ensure the appointment of unqualified includes the establishment of the Agriculture Council of India for academic agriculture education and granting professional status of the agriculture sector with the other professionals. These endeavors aim to provide better job opportunities and career advancement for the all those involved in agriculture. ISA UP unit also worked for resolving issues like fellowship and other, and also submit, submitted memorandum to from state agriculture counseling to bring more professionalism in the agriculture education. We are also working to form a dairy chapter in the UP for the betterment of sector. However, we need some more work and strength on it. Thank you so much. I, uh, on the behalf of uh, uh, Chairman ID Eastern UP Chapter, I welcome you all uh, in this uh, IDA uh, uh, because IDA is also part of this uh, uh, conference or uh, seminar. And uh, uh, today we have gathered here uh, for the 
to, to commemorate the birth anniversary of uh, the Mr. Vargis Kurian, uh, Dr. Vargis Kurian, uh, who is a milkman and father of white revolution. And we have, he had a uh, contribution which can't be explained uh, in few words uh, because he contributed. Now uh, the, we have the number one position uh, in milk production that is due to the uh, Dr. Vargis Kurian. So uh, in this presentation, uh, I have to present, present presentation. So, okay, just a minute for presentation. So we have BTEC student also here. So till the presence is started, I, I have one question to all of you. The students who are sitting here, they have a question for them. Today, Dr. Vargis Kurian's birth anniversary is, which is the birth anniversary? Number? So, when you are ready, you will tell us. Those who are connected to our webinar, they want to tell us that our webinar is online. They want to tell us that our webinar is online. They want to tell us that our webinar is online. अगर कैमरा से अगर फोकस किया जाए तो मोर देन हंड्रेड पार्टिसिपेंट हमारे पास इस हॉल में बैठे हुए हैं और ऑनलाइन जुड़े हुए हैं तो ये गैदरिंग कम से कम तीन सौ से ऊपर की गैदरिंग है और ये इसके लिए आ, मिस्टर सुनील बधाई के पात्र हैं जिन्होंने बहुत कम समय में आ, इतना बड़ा और अरेंजमेंट किया और अभी तक मुझे जवाब नहीं मिला आप लोगों से आज नेट से देखने के बाद बोल रहे हो सब लोग हैं चलो आ, बहुत अच्छी बात है और आ, आ, टॉपिक जो बहुत ही अच्छा टॉपिक है जो दिया गया जो रखा गया इस वेबिनार के लिए स्पेशली जो यूथ है हमारा जो आ, किसी भी कंट्री का जो स्ट्रेंथ होता है वो दैट इज यूथ द यूथ ऑफ दैट नेशन एंड आई स्पेशली वी आर लकी दैट वी हैव द बिग टेक कोर्सेज इन फूड टेक्नोलॉजी डेरी टेक्नोलॉजी वी हैव अ गैदरिंग अवर ऑफ इट सेल्फ इन अवर डिपार्टमेंट इज मोर देन टू सो इट इज सो वी आर हेयर टू सी सम रिसेंट एडवांसेज इन द डेरी प्रोसेसिंग because there is a growing sector and we are here uh, number one position or number one position uh, that uh, some improvements are there previously we have a tag that we have a uh, number uh, number one position not only the milk production we have the uh, number of animals huge number of animals but per animal uh, production is less but now we are doing work on the in that directions also especially uh, in milk uh, preservation milk production and uh, milk packaging so if we uh talk about the recent advances in the dairy processing uh, dairy processing sector and dairy processing sector is growing so i am especially want to focus on the two or three uh, facts uh, one uh, that is uh, that is very important that is the processing so we are at, we are doing the uh, having some advancement in the processing techniques in the milk production uh, as well as the uh, milk uh, processing also uh, in other sector that is very uh, uh, important that is the packaging so now uh, we have uh, uh, we have initially we have some tag with that that we are we are the people using the raw milk that that is our specialty that we are using the raw milk but nowadays we are also focusing on the uh, processing also and packaging also so we have do we have done so many innovations in the uh, packaging also apart from that we are doing some advancement in the adulteration also so that we all focus the time is very less and we have to cover uh, all these topics so this this introduction we can see the dairy industry is experiencing the robust growth propelled by the technological innovations enhanced retail and e-commerce platform and improved cold chain infrastructure meeting uh, rising consumer demand with a diversified and a quality focused stage so there are uh, so many technologies innovation technological innovations are there that which playing the crucial role in the transforming the dairy industry so uh, you can see the recent advances although these are not that much recent but uh, you can say in the past decades we are we have done the advancement uh, especially in case of ultrasonification cold plasma technology high pressure processing pulse electric field processing we, these are the very recent uh, recent doesn't mean that uh, this is in the within 2 3 year but with last decade we are working on this especially the high pressure processing uh, thermal as well as non thermal uh, techniques that we are using for the uh, processing of the milk so other advances in the milk processing that we can see ultra fish in the ultra filtration and in this picture you can see the uh, ro uh, reverse osmosis micro filtration nano filtration electrodialysis that advancement uh, we are doing uh, in the milk processing sectors 
and having the various applications also. CIP also, uh, which is a very essential part uh, in the dairy industry, the uh, CIP and COP, the both are very important uh, uh, important component. And we are nowadays, we are focusing on the robust, uh, the, sorry, uh, robotic CIPs. So we are now focusing that, that is advancement in the robotic CIPs, which is uh, uh, having the step-by-step -step, uh, the uh, CIP uh, that is followed in the uh, dairy plant. So these are the various advantages of the CIP system that you can see. And robotic system that we now we are going to introduce. Although in European countries you can see, or other countries that was introduced in the 1992, in 2000 also, but nowadays India is also progressing in the robotic fields also. Uh, uh, it is a robotic milking uh, or herd management or predictive analytics. So as an artificial intelligence we have introduced in the case of dairy sector, and that have various applications uh, like herd management, uh, you can see in the herd management that we are using the AI algorithm can monitor individual cow health. And uh, if cow is in the herd, uh, we can monitoring the health, monitor the health, uh, fertility, feeding patterns, and the milk output in the collection of um, massive state. So we can plan, we can plan the diet, uh, we can plan the diet with this AI techniques, diet for him, we can monitor the uh, health also because health is a very important component uh, for an animal, and especially when we go for the milk. Predictive analytic uh, uh, study we can also do in the, uh, the AI approach. Uh, that application of AI in the uh, the power the predictive analytic analytic and uh, analytics in the dairy business have proved to beneficial. So that gives the idea about the future milk yield uh, patterns, uh, established factors that influence the production by the analyzing the large data stream. So quality control is also uh, the AI is also working in the quality control also and uh, that. Uh, uh, precision feeding also that is very important because feeding is having the important component so uh, for the animal uh, uh, in the milk in case of milk so that we that we are doing in the as an advance uh, in a, especially we're introducing the ai techniques reproductive management robotic herd monitoring that all we are doing uh, with the ai technique so these are the uh, some uh, recent uh, work we are doing uh, in the uh, especially in the management and the herd system of the or rearing system of the uh, uh, cattle or the cow. So biotech some biotechnological advances, we are also doing dairy industries, especially in the biopreservation method we are using. Bactericin we are nicin we are using long time, but especially in the cheese production and that we are using the, the new new uh, uh, stains we are introducing in case of bi uh, bactericin. We are introducing uh, enzymes also. The application of biotechnology is a significant role to produce the enzyme using the food in the dairy industry, various enzymes we are uh, using. Probiotics, uh, everybody know about the probiotics. And we are working on the probiotic stain that can work in the acid resistant uh, environment and other thing, acid tolerant uh, and base tolerant uh, stain that we are developing. So we are now, we are working on the uh, some microbiology, oh, sorry, uh, molecular chain uh, biology works uh, in case of probiotic stains, okay? So now future application biotechnology in dairy industry, we can see, Especially, uh, we can divide the sector into two, uh, dairy production or dairy processing. In dairy production, uh, recombinant bovines, uh, recombinant vaccines, DNA fingerprinting, embryo, embryo transfer technologies we are using. And in case of dairy processing, food grade bioprecursives we are using, uh, dairy enzymes and proteins we are working, probiotics we are working. Especially uh, dairy waste and dairy byproducts is an important sector where we can work. You know? So that is an important component. Packaging uh, is... Uh, uh, so I told uh, in initially my slide, I will focus uh, when we go for the advance, when we want to talk about the advancement in the dairy sector, uh, there may be uh, one, the processing sector, uh, production sector, packaging is very important company. So nowadays uh, we are working with the nano composite films also. So nano composite, nano films, nano composite, nano clay methods, the uh, nano clays they, that is used for the packaging. So these packaging material, they have wide applications uh, in the, in case of, uh, dairy sector or especially the packaging material. So uh, you can see uh, the potential application of nanotechnology in food packaging uh, that is having the very good barrier properties against oxygen and light, uh, mechanical strength and flexibility. So it gives a both barrier as well as the mechanical properties. Uh, durability, nanoclay, nanotubes can also be used. Okay? So these are the uh, these are the part of the uh, we can say the part of the intelligent packaging that we used in case of the uh, dairy sector. So application of nano composite films it can also uh, nano composite films where we are using, uh, especially nowadays uh, we are using some extracts 
so some excites and making the silver nanoparticles and other nanoparticles and then from there we are making the nanofilms so that nanofilms is a very important having the very barrier properties we are also having the antimicrobial properties also okay so nano composite materials are used uh, composed of nanoscale uh, structure that enhances the microscopy so you can see the polymer clay nanoclays we are using silica nano composite or nano silver that we are using that is having the excellent uh, antibacterial properties because silver we know that the antibacterial property so that is the innovation uh, uh, is uh, uh, we are doing in the uh, the uh, nano composite especially in the packaging film so these are the various companies that are using the nano integrating nanotechnology techniques in the packaging so these are some sensors nano sensor that is used in the food component that humidity sensor that is a part of intelligent packaging so there are two type of packaging uh, active packaging where we introduce some material which monitor and check the uh, shelf life and other is the uh, intelligent packaging or smart packaging that indicates the that can be partial history or full history uh, full history means that uh, explain the the whole journey of that food products okay so that is the part of that one so we are using the nano barcodes and other things that for the uh, nano packaging materials so two or three works that had been done uh, in uh, specially packaging system of coa so coa is having the problem of the shelf life or shelf cell so with this a smart packaging we can increase the shelf life of the coa up to 90 days packaging of the china powder china powder is also a high moisture food, uh, dairy sweets uh, that is having so that we use the different uh, material uh, for the uh, this packaging and that increase the shelf life under vacuum with vacuum 35 days without vacuum 19 days so these are the various packaging method with which uh, we can enhance the shelf life of our traditional indian uh, dairy products so these are the intelligent packaging uh where we use the sensor other sensor data carriers or indicators that we use uh, uh for the packaging system so you can see uh, here one picture especially peda I'll, i appreciate the uh, initiatives of the fss side that uh, uh, dictate that the, you we have to mention the shelf life of the dairy sweets also so we here we are uh, here uh, the sensor was developed you can see the peda and other some off uh, off flavors or volatile compounds that is generated from the peda or dairy sweets that can be we can design the sensor based on that so you can see when it is a yellow color uh, it is having uh, you can use uh, for it and when it is a red color it is uh, not usable so this type of sensor that we can uh, develop for the other sweets also especially for milk powder also uh, off flavor associated with the rancidity so three types of ph sensitive dyes that is used in this one so you can see uh, when it is green in color the powder is suitable to use when it is uh, yellow to orange color it is not suitable to use so these types of biosensor or intelligent packaging so intelligent packaging is the most uh, innovation or emerging study in case of packaging and especially for the milk product because milk is a, uh, is a perishable food product so that we can use so these are some type of uh, self cooling can where carbon dioxide is used uh, for cooling uh, and some heating Uh, self heating packages it is a three uh, three uh, jacketed packages triple jacketed tub so uh, it is there so where calcium oxide and uh, water react and form the calcium uh, hydroxide and produce the heat so these are self cooling and self heating packages that is developed in the as a part of the intelligent package so uh, these are the major innovation that we are doing in the especially when we are india we are using if we are not using the if we are not using the plastic we are using the uh, disposable material uh, especially while we are in banaras or other uh, countries we are using the uh, earthen pots earthen materials and uh, some patals and uh, the material prepared from the leaves so there is a uh, one uh, study which we want to focus and we are working on this and uh, the health hazards uh, of that packaging material so these type of material that especially wrapping the newspaper then can cause the cancer overall migration limit is 60 mg per day so migration study that we can perform uh, especially you can see uh, their uh, type of material in small industry where uh, microbiological status of patra paper sport uh, human handlers and dona patal making machine during production and storage of patra stacks uh, is a matter of concern okay so and for especially when we are working we are eating the food product from the earthen materials like dona and other so especially purva and other thing there may be a, a hazard uh, that if it is having some heavy materials that may have the some 
are transfer properties. So the, that study property we can study on this work. Bacterial contamination can also be there. Toxin can also be there, and a fungal con uh, contaminant and mycotoxin can also be possible when we are using the leaves material as a leaf material like dona and other pastel type material. So that mycotoxin can also may also be. There. So we are working. It is also very emerging field. And although we are very close to nature by using this material, but we have to be concerned uh, about the microbiological status, heavy metal status, and other status of this, uh, especially disposable material. So this uh, importantly, uh, this message I want to give from here uh, on this day, uh, uh, we have to be conscious. We have to use, we we should use uh, disposable material, but we have to be uh, take care of that because most of the time we see that this disposable material put we put in the store for long time. So immediately we take from that and we start to use. So there may be some contamination and other problems may also be possible. So uh, this other innovation you can see, uh, hologram is a, a trademark of any company. So nowadays 3D holo, 2D hologram and 3D holograms developed. And uh, these are the some skin packaging material also used. Uh, this is a, this packaging known as blister packaging. So this is a, a, a heat uh, embossing packaging. So, ye glass ke indar, usme, uh, embossing hota, emboss packaging that material is used. So, these are, I'm showing this the, some innovation uh, from the traditional packaging. So, these are the fantasy effect of packaging. So, uh, this is very interactive packaging. So, especially when you are going to design your product, uh, you can see, uh, think about this packaging uh, material also. Now, this is uh, some uh, opening with the pressing techniques. These are the, some innovation uh, in the packaging. Child resistant packaging. So it is in some case so that child can win. So now new innovation and techniques in the adulteration also. Adulteration is a very big problem. And we initially we are using uh, some platform test like PET, SNF, and other uh, 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 COB test that we do. But nowadays we are, uh, especially the methods like antibiotic detection and pesticide detection, it takes long time. And especially whenever uh, milk is in the channel, we can't wait for the two days or three days, the result of the antibiotic and the pesticide rescues. So we have developed some, and we are working on some new techniques that is having the rapid detection kits or SIP like kits that we are using. So that may be DNA based testing, mass spectrometry, spectroscopy, uh, polymerase chain reaction, PCR method, near infrared uh, spectroscopy. These are the very latest methods that we are used to develop the uh, strip based or rapid detection methods of the, especially antibiotic and the pesticides, which in, uh, generally take three to four days. So, uh, some innovative milk based product that has been developed uh, dietetic milk sweets like milk cake, lal pida rasgulla, gulab jamun, herbal products are also there. And milk and fruit based antacid tablets. Generally, antacid tablets are uh, from the uh, uh, chemical based. And so, we are milk and fruit that natural material can be used for the antacid med tablet. Low calorie instant gulab jamun, these two projects are under uh, IPR, uh, instant carrot halwa, micron septin, and herbal jamun. Apart from that, the vision of uh, our uh, uh, respected uh, uh, like the father of uh, white revolution, Dr. Vazir, we have to work on the indigenous cow uh, breed also, because uh, this indigenous, that is a matter or battle of the A1 and A2. Apart from that, there are a number of health benefits that is associated with the uh, indigenous cow milk. So we are also working on that also, especially in this region, we have uh, done the protein mapping of the Aganga Teri cow milk we have done, mapping in other indigenous breed in comparison with the cross breed we are doing, that what are the especially other benefits are there. So in this, uh, we have done some work like uh, HRMS, it is a very small work that we have done. And uh, uh, the mapping of the casein, beta casein as well as the whey proteins. And it is also very good work uh, that uh, to mapping and uh, to indigenous cow breed because we have to save our indigenous cow breed. No. So we have uh, started the study with the Ganga theory and we are also working on some other uh, uh, breed also. So in conclusion, we can say recent technologies such as automatic milking machine, sensor, blockchain and automatic feeder uh, can provide the significant improvement to milk production, environmental sustainability and animal welfare in the livestock agriculture. Sophisticated milk processing technologies have also been developed which will have a remarkable role to produce a dairy product that are wholesome and fit for the human consumption. Okay. So these advanced technologies should be more accessible and to farmers around the world, particularly to farmers in the developing countries to improve the milk uh, production, reduce higher CGA, uh, CHG emissions and feed growing population. 
So with this, I conclude my presentation. And with the permission of organizer, I want to uh, inform you further some information because we are in BHU, we are having the Eastern UP, ID Eastern UP chapter. And uh, after three days, we are going to organize the national seminar. Uh, so you can see you all uh, of you, uh, all of you are invited uh, for this uh, national seminar. And uh, this is a national seminar, especially to, uh, to commemorate the 75th year of establishment of Indian Dairy Association, which is uh, a very prestigious association of dairy, working a tremendous work in, in the field of dairy sector, especially connecting the uh, entrepreneurs, industry person, farmers, students, and academia. So all are joining uh, in this event. So you are also welcome. Uh, thank you so much to organizers, especially Mr. Sunil sir. Uh, he's our very young assistant professor in the department and very dynamic. And uh, thank you so much to all the others. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So now we are proceeding towards prize distribution ceremony for yesterday's quiz competition that was on National Milk Day. For that, I would like to invite Dr. John David to address us. Sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, and now you're audible. Should I announce the things? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Should I announce the names? Hi, yes, sir. Please. Uh, so, friends, uh, yesterday there was a quiz uh, regarding this, our National Milk Day celebrations. And I am happy to announce our first prize goes to Kiran S. from SMC College of Dairy Science, Anand. Uh, everyone should uh, applause. Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, am I uh, audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, yeah. So, our first prize goes to Kiran S. from uh, SMC College of Dairy Science, Anand. Our second prize goes to Subham Kumar, Go Institute of Agriculture and Technology, Schwartz. Subham Kumar. And our third prize goes to Sabasachi Rao from COH. UAT Orissa. Wish you all the best and congratulations on your success. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this. Thank you so much for taking out time for us. Okay, thank you. Now you can please in this. Priya, now you can proceed with further events. So, now I would like to call Mr. Prashant Bhatt. He is the Chief R&D Officer, Mother Dairy Fruit and Vegetable Private Limited, New Delhi. He has 25 years of food industry experience in R&D, commercialization, manufacturing, operations and flavor application in various leadership roles. Please, sir. Sir, now your slide is visible. You can please proceed. Yes, sir. Sir, please unmute yourself. You are not audible.
Sir, you are not audible. Sir, you are not audible. Right, sir. Sir, सर आपका जो माइक है ना तो माइक चूज करिए कौन सा माइक आपने चूज कर रखा है वो जो बट यूर वॉइस इज नॉट कमिंग टू अस सर कैन यू लीव दिस मीटिंग एंड ज्वाइन अगेन सर और ज्वाइन करते ही मूव लोग अंदर करना हो हाँ सर सर एक अनम्यूट होने के लिए दे दिया है सर हमने आज तो आज तो म्यूट अब अब देखिए सर एक बार ना सर आप इस लड़की को लीव कर दीजिए फिर दोबारा से ज्वाइन करिए शायद कुछ प्रॉब्लम नो सर नॉट ऑडिबल सर सर एक बार ना इस मीटिंग को लीव करके दोबारा करिए सर मुझे लगता है कि उससे कॉल हो जाएगा सर आपकी स्लाइड तो दिख रही है स्लाइड हो रही है बस आवाज नहीं आ रही नहीं सर आवाज नहीं आ रही एक बार सर इसको लीव करिए ना सर हो जाएगा सर अब हमने इजी कर दिया है वैसे सर आप ट्राई करिए तो सर देखें इसको इसको नहीं करने की जरूरत है आपको तो ये लॉगिन करने की जरूरत नहीं है यार अब आपको हमने होस्ट बना दिया सर
Hello. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Oh, okay, okay, fine. Uh, sorry, can we start now? Hello? Yes, sir, you can. can... Uh, okay, fine. Fine. Uh, so uh, in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, I'll be talking about uh, the innovative approaches and opportunities within the food and dairy industry. Uh, so basically, I'll cover the three parts. Uh, one is about uh, the emerging consumer trends in the food industry. Then uh, the dairy innovations. And the third part is the skills needed and the career opportunities within the industry. So first, let us look at uh, what the trends are. Uh, so trends, basically, they, they predict the future needs of the consumers. So what are the, or what are the needs of the consumers? So need is basically the reason for which a consumer buys a food product or a beverage. As an example, you have a chai, right? So that is for alertness or energy. Similarly, you have charge for hydration, or you can have a carbonated beverage for fun. So these are all the different needs of the consumers and the trends basically uh, try to predict the future needs of the consumers. And in dairy innovations, I'll be talking about uh, some of the, the innovation platforms within our company, Mother Dairy. And then lastly, I'll cover about the, the career opportunities as well as the skill needed. Uh, now coming to the emerging trends. Um, first one is about uh, health and wellness, right? So health and wellness has been the biggest need of the consumer since, since ages. Health, is, health and wellness is about um, your daily needs. Your daily need would be um, energy or a hydration or say bone or muscle, maintenance, strength, etc. So there are several products which play within this uh, trend and dairy and dairy products play a very important role in this. As an example, milk is had not only for energy, but it, it is also beneficial in maintaining bone health, uh, muscle uh, strength, and there are several other benefits uh, that consumers know about. Um, then the second uh, trend, that, which is the current trend and in future, this is going to be a big one. It is about nutrient dense food. So what does a nutrient dense food mean? Um, I would give an example of protein. So many of uh, you would be uh, uh, actively uh, exercising or say you would be in sports, etc., which typically uh, would, would do a wear and tear to your muscle and bone. So you would need higher level of protein than the recommended one. So recommended protein level would be one gram of protein per kg of the body weight. So if some, some person uh, weighs 60 uh, kg, then he or she uh, would need around 60 grams of protein. So during the sports, as well as during exercising, uh, you would need higher levels of protein and you need necessarily the protein dense food. An example of a protein dense food is paneer. So paneer contains around 25% of protein per 100 gram of uh, paneer. So one serving of paneer can give you around 25 grams of uh, protein, which is almost 40% of your daily uh, requirement of protein. And uh, this, this uh, protein dense food trend is going to evolve further and further as the per capita income goes, goes up. Another example would be uh, around probiotics. So probiotic uh, is, is, is uh, nutrient dense in terms of delivering the digestive health. So digestive health is one of the, the big need states uh, among the consumers, considering that uh, we tend to move away from our traditional diet because traditional diet um, has 
the the fiber in it coming from different leafy vegetables um, etc and at the same time it has got a protein source as well as um, a source of uh, bacterial cultures which is curd but as you move away from the traditional diet into the some new age food that necessarily would need um, delivering um, uh, ingredients like probiotics which will help in replenishing your uh, gut microflora um then the, then the third uh, trend is ha kar diya unne kar diya good morning yeah the th third trend is around personalization and premiumization so if you go to starbucks on coffee they can do any designs right so this is about personalization you can write your name also or say your on on a birthday cake the name is written so these are all personalization uh, aspects then premiumization is about how do you make a product more indulgent so indulgent chocolate or indulgent indulgent ice cream etc so there is a big trend around this because uh, india is a population that like that likes uh, indulgent products so we like sweet products and uh, indulgent products so this is a big uh, need state then there is a trend around clean label so um this is big in us and euro europe where you you try to use lesser number of additives uh, like preservatives etc in india unfortunately consumers do not much read the labels and in on the label also the font size is very very small so this is not very prevalent currently but this will come in the future clean label try to use as much less additives as possible then there is a trend around e-commerce and direct to consumers so e-commerce would be uh, the way of delivering the product through uh, platforms like flipkart or an amazon whereas direct to consumer is the company itself running this this business through their app own app uh, so in the case of direct to consumers uh, the company needs to invest a lot uh, in making the product available to the consumer at, at their home or wherever they want Uh, but the margins are higher in the case of direct to consumer uh, sales then uh, the sixth trend is around sustainable packaging so uh, the 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 current young generation uh, is is very much concerned about how do we preserve the planet right so less use of plastics um, preservation of the natural resources these are all the key themes and this is going to grow in the future so the, the, so what what we covered just now is the six different trends that are prevalent and i'll talk about uh, the innovation platforms i mean the products that can fit these trends the first first uh, uh, platform platform is about health and wellness where where i'll try to uh, talk about uh, the fortification efforts by our company in in making uh, the micronutrients available to a large mass of the consumers and the second uh, platform is about nutrient dense which you discussed so i'll specifically cover around probiotics here and third is about premiumization uh, where i would i would talk about how we can make the the ethnic products like curd or a kulfi etc more indulgent and the last one is about environmental friendly packaging uh so if you look at the micronutrient deficiency uh, the deficiency of these nutrients which are required at a very small uh, quantity the deficiency would lead not only to the health impact but it will also lead to economic impact uh, i would try to uh, elaborate this um, currently the iron deficiency is very serious in india uh, nearly half of the female population is iron deficient one third of male population is iron deficient and uh, the children below 10 year of age nearly 70% of them are iron deficient so when you have iron deficiency it leads to anemia that means you cannot perform to the maximum level of your efficiency when you cannot perform to the maximum level then the gdp also would would come down so it does it it not only has the the health impact it it has it has a severe impact on the financial uh, part of of the country also um, similarly if you look at vitamin a deficiency it is nearly 60% it 
vitamin A deficiency leads to night blindness. And vitamin D is even more severe, nearly 94%, because people tend to stay in home uh, because of pollution concerns or say they do not go out in the sunlight, etc. And at the same time, our traditional food is not rich in these nutrients, unfortunately, um, especially the vegetarian. Most of these uh, nutrients sit in the non-vegetarian uh, part of the food. And the consumption and frequency of non-vegetarian food in, in India is quite low. It is not adequate. So we don't get enough of these nutrients. So uh, we have been working on this, on how do we deliver vitamin A and D in our milk so that it can reach very large population on a daily basis. And we have been doing uh, this initiative since few decades. Um, in 1984, we first introduced vitamin A in our uh, milk, um, basically to address the night blindness, the issue of night blindness, which was very severe at that time. And from that point onwards uh, till now, uh, we have been the pioneers in delivering vitamin A and D in different formats of milk as well as vegetable oil, which is one of our products. And now coming to the consumer segmentation. So if you, uh, if you talk about the health and wellness, basically we can divide the consumers within these three segments. One first which is the smallest one is the high wellness achievers. These are the people who do exercise, they try to balance their, their diet, etc. And the second uh, biggest is the moderate wellness achievers, which is 37%, which is orange uh, color. And the third is the biggest, which is the low uh, wellness seekers. So this, we, if, if, we, if, if you look at, look at the health and wellness platform, then uh, the consumers can be divided in these three parts. And based on the, the consumer study uh, that our partners have done, so uh, you, you look at the 10 or 12 uh, requirements on the left hand side, which is drinking enough water. Something like the most easiest thing to do, drink enough water, the high wellness achievers would be achieving it to a great extent, whereas the low wellness achievers, only 68% per, are achieving it, which is the easiest thing to do then getting enough sleep or say eating balanced diet, etc. Even something like keeping the track of the steps, how many steps you do on a daily basis. The first two um, parts of consumers, they are not at all worried about. Uh, forget about the high intensity exercise. So this is very important in life. Even at the young age, you need to um, put these things in practice so that your health is in your control, which is very, very essential. Uh, now coming to the nutrient dense, uh, um, uh, dense products. Uh, let me try to explain um, how important is this digestive, digestive health is. So if you look at uh, uh, our body, the most neglected part of the body is our gut. Uh, in our gut, there is a huge colony of uh, live bacteria that resides that very few consumers know about it. There are trillions of bacteria uh, that reside in, in our gut. And they have many beneficial uh, actions, like they help in uh, breaking down the un undigested food and, and get the nutrients out of it. And it, it also helps in the bowel movement. And not only... Uh, uh, they they help in 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 the digestive uh, health. They basically also connect with brain because this is the only other living thing within the body. So there are studies that they connect with the with the brain. And many a times, if there is an attack by by a pathogen or a or a bad bacteria, etc., in other parts of the body, they help the brain to create a defense against those uh, pathogens. So there is a kind of uh, different uh, benefits they, de they, they, they deliver. They even help in um, releasing the hormones like uh, uh, dopamine, etc., which are the happiness hormones. So there are several benefits. So the only thing that you have to do is try to keep that balance of good bacteria versus bad bacteria in your gut. So what helps in doing that? 
having enough fiber in your food helps helps doing that because this fiber acts as a food for this good bacteria and they grow so more they grow it is better so what doesn't help are the antibiotics so when you have an antibiotic uh, people tend to have antibiotics for each and everything right so uh, when you have an antibiotic they go to the intestine and then they kill both the good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria so to replenish them it takes several weeks and during that replenishment period the person would have a low immunity and he has a tendency to catch other ailments so it is very important that we restrict the usage of antibiotics uh now what are probiotics probiotics are the bacteria which is which are very similar that we have in our uh, gut um so probiotics can be delivered through products like curd or say uh, chaj or any other dairy product um so what they do is they have an ability to um, withstand to a major extent the acidic ph within our our uh, stomach because stomach has a, has a ph of around 1 to 1.5 so they can withstand that acidic ph and then they can reach the the gut where they can replenish the existing uh, gut microflora which then deliver different benefits so we have been uh, working on this and uh, we have a few products already uh, using probiotics which which are doing well but this is going to be a big trend in the future uh, and and one of our fermented range of products we want to uh, fortify with this uh, you know, probiotics now coming to the premiumization of taste um, so uh, earlier most of the ethnic products used to be sold in a loose format right uh, at your neighboring shop uh, etc but when it is sold in the loose format the taste cannot be consistent because every day it is very difficult to deliver the same consistent taste and also there are safety uh, issues right food safety issues so um, companies like us have been converting the ethnic products into the packaged format where you can deliver the taste very consistently with a food safety built in um as an example kulfi so we have kulfi uh, which is sold at around 20 rupees a pack there is an opportunity to premiumize the taste here you can deliver more indulgent kulfi slightly higher price similarly uh, more indulgent curd thick curd uh, creamy curd at slightly higher price so uh, i think the, the food industry should try to deliver uh, the products for masses as well as the the products with premium taste because india is currently growing our our gdp is expected to double in the next 7 to 8 years and as the capital uh, per, per capita income goes people tend to move to the premium products which is currently happening so one should have both uh, the mass products as well as the the premium products in the portfolio so that a large base of the consumers can be um, can be catered to and at the same time uh, teens and youngsters currently go for the new trends they they want things like smoothies um, yogurts etc so one should be capable of delivering those consumer needs uh, now coming to the commitment towards environment um, so um, we are part of a, a big initiative called as extended producer responsibility which is epr so milk uses uh, plastic as packaging because plastic pouch is the lowest cost packaging format uh, a liter of milk can be packed in a in a in a plastic pouch that costs around 50 paisa so any other any other format of uh, packaging would lead to a higher price of milk which is not um, currently accepted because you you need to you need to cater to a large masses of consumers at an affordable price um so how do you reduce plastic right so uh, you can look at different ways of doing it in the milk industry uh, one good thing is that uh, most of the packaging is single layer plastic because single layer plastic is is easy to recycle whereas multi layer plastic as an example a packet of chips has a multi layer 
it has got aluminum foil in it uh, it has got uh, other different layers of plastic in it so it is not possible to recycle easily single layer plastic can be recycled and second thing is milk industry uses crates crates as the secondary packaging so all other industry uses uses cartons which is made up of paper right so crates can be reused for several cycles so a crate uh, can be used for the next three to four years um, for for the, as a secondary packaging for milk. So this is the these are the different ways which, which are already built in 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 the dairy industry. How do we um, optimize your uh, plastic usage? And we have been working on this. So our target would be uh, to reduce around two hundred tons of plastic uh, each year by not just by reducing the the thickness or the weight but also working on the granule uh, level so uh, the plastic granules uh, formulation level which is called as material of construction so working on that material of construction there are ways to reduce the the plastic uh, and uh, through the epr uh, initiative we we try to recycle the same quantity of plastic that we use. As an example, we are using one ton of plastic currently in our products. We try to recycle the same one ton of plastic by working with the rag pickers, uh, which then gets converted into granules and that can be used in uh, different formats like chairs, tables, etc. So this is called as plastic neutrality. So whatever plastic you are using, you are trying to recycle that so we are we are becoming plastic neutral this current year and at the same time one of our products which is um, um, which is a token milk there is no packaging required so the consumer themselves bring a utensil and collect the milk and take it back so that it is a non-packaged uh, uh, product and there are several other initiatives so uh, in our case what we do is um, um, we don't take uh, enormous or huge targets and we don't just keep talking about those targets because they take several years to deliver. Instead of that, each of those targets, we try to break into several small projects. And those several small projects can be in a focused way delivered within the short timeline. So this is something, the some approach that, that, that we have been following. Now coming to the, the skills and uh, career opportunities which would be of uh, interest uh, to you within the dairy and food industry. Um, so we have got several uh, segments of the industry, right? Dairy is one of them. Then you have got fruits and vegetables, bakery, confectionery, beverages, etc. Uh, these are the, the, the FMCG products. Um, and there are uh, suppliers who cater to these businesses, which are called as ingredient suppliers. As an example, flavor uh, is an ingredient within the food product. So there are flavor suppliers. There are other ingredients like probiotics or stabilizers, etc., which are which play a very important role in each of the food product in delivering the right taste, stability, etc. So these are the niche uh, segments. Uh, so you have got the main food uh, producer and there, there is a niche segment of this ingredient suppliers. So there are job opportunities within both these segments. So if you look at the roles, uh, one can opt for uh, manufacturing or say quality search and development based on his or her interest. Then also uh, there are opportunities within the research institutes or acad academics. Uh, one has an opportunity to start their own business, but uh, just after the college, it is difficult to start the business. One needs to have at least a few years of experience within the, the industry to start the business, to become successful. So if you look at the, the growth opportunities as well as uh, the, the salary remuneration, there are few of them which are currently doing very well. R&D is one of them, research and development is one of them. Then you have got techno commercial marketing. That means um, food technologists or a dairy technologist uh, getting into marketing part uh, of the business. Uh, thereby, um, there can be faster growth. Um, similarly, uh, 
there are several niche segments, as I said, flavor ingredient or a stabilizer as an ingredient or a probiotic as an ingredient. Uh, these are the niche uh, segments. So whenever you enter into a niche segment, there is always a big demand around it because very few people understand those businesses. And those businesses cater to several uh, industries. So there is a big demand in the ingredient companies also, in, both in terms of growth as well as um, uh, the, the remuneration. Uh, this is this is one um, uh, important skill, uh, in my opinion, every food technologist or a dairy technologist should have, irrespective of which role he or she would be taking. Uh, it is about sensory, right? So sensory uh, capabilities help in several things um, because you would always be working around a product. Even if you are at the plant, you would be manufacturing the product. If you are in the R&D, you would be developing the product. If you are in marketing, then you are... Uh, making that product suitable for the consumers. So here sensory plays a very important role. Uh, sensory is not just about um, uh, the taste, right? So it is about appearance. Uh, appearance plays a very important role in India because India is about colors. So if you make an orange flavored drink colorless, nobody would even perceive that flavor. So orange um, drink should have the orange color. Similarly, mango should have a yellowish orange color. So appearance plays a very important role. Then there is aroma. And flavor is about taste. And also there are certain uh, textures, right? So a paneer gives you a, te a different texture as compared to a chips uh, or a biscuit. Uh, so it is very important to understand uh, and, and build your skills around uh, sensory irrespective of which role you would be going into. And in terms of behavioral skills, skills, there are like, you can read several books around it, but uh, in my opinion, if I summarize, what is most needed is, see from the technical perspective, since you are, you are studying in a, in, a, in a reputed institute, you would have good technical capability as a student, right? But uh, your behavioral skills are also equally important when you enter into a corporate. Um, so you cannot deliver everything alone, right? So there is always a team which you are part of. So team working is, is, mo is one of the most important things. Um, you, you need to be a good team worker. Unless you are a good team worker, nobody else would want, want to work with you or nobody else wants to collaborate with you. And then you won't be successful there. So building your social, socialization skills as well as team working skills is very important, which you can practice at your institutes also, right? You have several programs conducted by the institutes. Try to take taking part in them, try to form the team, try to give the credit to each of the individual who are part of those teams. These are the, some of the important things that one has to um, practice on a daily basis. Um, then self-motivation. So in the, in the industry, nobody tries to motivate you on a daily basis. You have to be self-motivated. Don't think that um, I'm depressed today and there'll be somebody coming and motivating me. That doesn't happen. So one has to be self-motivated. And then there is a passion to learn, right? So you have learned in the institute certain things, but industry teaches you in the practical uh, uh, situation how things are delivered so which is very important to learn so keep on learning both about technology as well as application part because most of the time what i must is one tends to do a lot of research and that research when it get is is going to be applied in the practical situation <laughs> it is not commercially feasible that is my last I'm slide sorry. okay sir so. yeah Okay, so, um, and then the then the uh, fourth thing is about agility, how fast you can adopt to new things. Um, so all this together um, can be summarized into a solution finding approach. So one should have a solution finding approach rather than the issue finding approach. So one, if you have this kind of approach, then you would be successful in the, in the industry. Yeah, this is my last slide. Uh, I don't know if there's a time for question or answers, et cetera. You can get in touch with me if you have any questions. Thank you. Sir, at last we will have a question answer round. Yeah. So in
anybody if anybody has any question they will write in the chat box and in physical mode they will ask you question directly sure sure thank you thank you so much thank you so much sir for the insightful knowledge uh, now we have also professor uh, rk duari with us who is the professor of dairy science and food technology department of banaras hindu university i would like to welcome uh, him for addressing this program please thank you so much uh, a very good afternoon to one and all who is physically present and who are virtually joining us into this uh, seminar i am thankful to dr uh, prashant bhat uh, very glad that he provided a information in very just manner very uh, concise manner he provided the what are the opportunities and what are the things we are looking for development in dairy sector because it's a uh, always a very important to uh, remember that uh, what the role of dr varghese kurian is in the economic and uh, bringing the white revolution in india okay so that is very important so apart from that uh, the milk industry is also uh, addressing various sustainable development works or projects that government has set up one is to first elevate the poverty uh, which is very important providing uh, opportunities to the uh, unemployed youths or people and second is to elevate the milk production and uh, improvise the economical status status of india as a whole so india is basically uh, the major part of the economic uh, revolution so earning is from milk and milk industry so it's a very much uh, the industry still needs lot of development and dr prashant bhat in uh, his seminar also he highlighted various sectors and that's a lot of r and d's uh, work is needed and uh, uh, still we are saying that we are producing high amount of milk the quality the premium products uh, has to be improved okay. so that is what uh, the academicians and industry people are looking up to provide a very good nutritious and clean and safe dairy product i want to congratulate the organizing team uh, also congratulate uh, meena that he uh, it's a very apt uh, time that we should have this type of gathering and know the what are the opportunities which is available i hope the participants uh, and uh, have a uh, lot of interactions with the experts and they have gained the knowledge that they have been uh, providing through their presentation okay so thank you have a good day priya can you please unmute yourself and progress this program yes thank you sir now i would like to call Dr. Sanket Burad, Technical Hi. Director, Clevy Dairy Solutions, Ahmedabad. He is ex scientist, NDRI Karna, ex head R and D, Lotte Lab for Ice Cream, and certified entrepreneur trainer, and trained more than two hundred dairy entrepreneurs. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, shall I present my presentation? So, so. Is it visible? Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. So we are here to celebrate uh, Dr. Kurian uh, on uh, National Milk Day. So, first of all. Uh, Uh, happy national milk day to one and all present over here uh the title is uh, about employment sir? and entrepreneurship pardon is it audible and visible oh, yes sir sorry okay so uh, after comp 
completion of your graduation program, you always think about, uh, uh, or you are always in the dilemma what to do, uh, keep studying or start a business or searching for the job or etc. So I'll give you brief detail uh, for next uh, 10 minutes. Uh, I'll give you my uh, introduction first. I am a BTEC, MTEC and PhD in dairy technology. Uh, I have worked as a scientist at NDRI Karnal for four years. So I was through government job. Uh, during that period also, I was uh, a certified entrepreneurship trainer for DST, a Ministry of Science and Technology. I was also extra expert for Oxygen Wallet, Arise and BRAC, Ministry of Science and Technology, which I am still over there. Then uh, I joined, I resigned from government job. I joined a corporate as a R&D head for Lotte Hevmore Ice Cream, Private Limited, based out at Ahmedabad for three years. And then right now I have my own consultancy business and I have experience of dealing with more than 1,000 entrepreneurs during my tenure at NDRA as well as this particular program. So I have seen uh, all three facets of life. Now, uh, what is life basically? Uh, we all have a, a shared uh, uh, entry into this world and we will be spending some of our time over here uh, around the clock and we have almost the same end. Uh, average age of an Indian is uh, 70 years. Uh, you particularly students have already crossed almost 20 years. So you have a 50 years to go. Out of that, 30 years will be your career. So you have completed 20 years. You are looking for something to do for next 30 years that it will be defined as your next upcoming career, okay? So uh, maybe uh, you always have a, a fantasy of owning a dream home. There are three types of photos available here, a, a villa or a mansion over here, then maybe a duplex bungalow, or maybe a, a residential quarter as well. Then you are, many of or most of you will be having fond of uh, uh, cars, your own cars, uh, could be... Uh, uh, any of these three or maybe other than these, then there are uh, different career opportunities as well, okay? Then uh, you can see in the left one, those standing next to a prime minister are basically uh, industrialist or a businessman, but they are always at the age of 70 years or 80 years, they are working continuously. It's not like they have a retirement at the age of 58 or so 60 years of age. So, you know, that what kind of job is required to fulfill your dreams, what kind of uh, home you can own, what kind of car you can own based on what kind of job or career you have. Okay. Now, there are four types of career options. You become a, a job seeker, you become a salaried person, you become a businessman. You, If you have a money already there from your ancestors, your fathers, your forefathers, you become an investor. And you become an industrialist. Okay. The difference between businessman and industrialist is that the businessman is more of a trading kind of activity to a smaller scale. Industrialist, like say Tata or say Mahindra or say Reliance or Adani, those are industrialists. They set up a large scale of industries to manufacture the product at huge, huge level. Normally, what happens, people don't know, but there is a, something going on background uh, and this is like always there in the field, but nobody knows what is that. And what I call it is a craving or say desire that always a salaried person wants to be a businessman or investor wants to be an industrialist. Okay. But I would recommend you that instead of focusing on what you want to do, you should focus on this next thing. Uh, uh, this will sound something uh, uh, odd to you, but this is reality because I was a student. I was a teacher, so I know the student and now I'm into the business also. Normally, when the students are there in the university, they do always have a different fantasy, correct? But the moment you focus on your achievement, what you want to do in your rest of your life, things or perspectives are changed drastically. I'll give you certain examples. Say, for example, if you remember, I said that uh, you are having uh, 50 years of your life remaining. If you say that uh, out of 30 years uh, will be your career, and if you spend uh, uh, more than 40% of your work, this is uh, 
a chart where you can see that uh, from out of 24 hours, you can see that around uh, nine hours, eight to nine hours or 10 hours is dedicated for the work. Remaining around 8% you spend for eating, around 14% if you are health conscious and if you love sports, you spend around 14% uh, of time over there. Then uh, the, again, bathing, TV, then you sleep around six hours or seven hours a day. Okay. So if you are into job, you spend more than 40% of your time in the work or the career. If you are in the business, like I do spend around 11, 12 hours of my daily routine time or maybe more than 12 hours uh, for my business. Okay. Uh, remaining things remain more or less same. So if you are in the business, you need to spend even more time. So uh, like in the previous slide, if you think that uh, after completion of your graduation, you get good job, you become a businessman, you marry a beautiful girl or you marry a, a handsome uh, boy and you will have a, a very good, healthy, stable love life. That's not the uh, reality. It, it's always possible in Ekta Kapoor serials or some movies. The reality is there. Uh, in the previous presentation, uh, Prashant sir very much uh, importantly said that you should choose career based on your passion or your interest. If you do not have your interest uh, in your field, then you are responsible for ruining your career because 40 to 50 percent of your life is spent on your work or business or job whatsoever. So technically everything is almost the same. Okay. Otherwise, if you feel that you want to have a job in the R&D and you start uh, your own business or you join the job in the quality or say production, you will always come home uh, tired and you will never be satisfied in your life. Okay. Now, what is career? So definition of career is that an occupation undertaken for a significant period, 40 to 50% of a person's life and with an opportunity for the progress. Now, remember... If you are not satisfied, your performance will not be there. You will not have opportunity for the progress because you will not grow. Okay. Now, think about, is it that occupation is meant for earning only? Is it about money only? What do you think about giving back to society? What do you like most, salary or Nobel Prize? Okay. If you can create something, say, for example, say, Dr. Varghese Kurian, we are celebrating him today. Do you know, anyone know what was the salary of Dr. Varghese Kurian? No, but everybody knows that Varghese Kurian was Padma Sri, Padma Bhushan, Padma Vipushan, correct? So, sometimes a price is more important, salary is not important, okay? So, I, career is not about only earning the money. Uh, this is a golden circle. Uh... There are three questions over here. Why, how, and what? Uh, this is a thumb rule. 80% people focus on what to do. Okay. Be it a job, be it a business. Okay. 20% people, which we generally call, are successful. They focus on how to do it. So normally in industry, if you want to be in a successful, be a businessman, be a job, uh, or salaried person, you need to focus on how to do. But... Less than 1% people focus on why to do. And these 1% people are generally revolutionary. Dr. Varghese Kurian was a salaried person. But he focused on why I want to do this. Along with him, uh, Mr. Tribhuvan Das Patel was focused on why should we do this. Because their focus was to give employment to the farmers. Not to sell the milk. Not to manufacture the butter. Their focus was on how to, uh, or why to do. Sorry, uh, all right. So, uh, this is about a, a normal uh, a human psychology. Most of the people focus on what to do and they cry for rest of life that we are not successful. Less than 1% people focus on why to do and they become a successful like Dr. Varghese Kurian. I would say uh, another uh, point over here is that you see these are the top richest people in this world. Okay. 
now you should observe that uh, have you ever observed these people uh, uh, in terms of their presence on whatsapp or instagram or facebook or youtube no because they do not have time to waste on social media they are highly focused on what they are doing and why they are doing and how they are doing so the core concept is always why but after finalizing why they want to do they always focus on how to do and what to do second thing whenever you have a vacation you always think of uh, roaming here and there have you ever observed that these richest people or those who are most influential people in this world go ever on the vacation have you ever seen kabhi aapne dekha chalo ambani ji aur adani ji aur tata hai wo indian hai to aapne kabhi dekha ki shimla manali ghumne gaye hai goa vacation pe gaye hai kerala ghumne gaye hai no never theek hai wo taj mahal bhi dekhne nahi jaate they always focus on why they are in this particular field they are highly committed okay now you see how you can transform there are two things here which are relevant to our field uh, that is a food industry on the left side there is a farmer if you are very good at farming you continue but you become an entrepreneur you give job opportunities to several thousands or lakhs of people okay and the second example is goat farming you will never see any goat farmer being a so much progressive but uh, mr vivek gupta who is a co founder of licious has changed the goat meat industry and he is responsible or he is a is a man who has created something a very interesting in terms of value chain for a consumer as well as a, a remuneration model for goat farmers basically so these are the things where we can bring some changes uh, i would say one more thing over here normally we as a india country always see entrepreneurs and businessmen as a negative uh, fundamental say for example uh, there are uh, 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 elections there were election in certain states and you can see that the, there are certain politicians they always say that one particular party uh, is uh, or one particular uh, politician is uh, having uh, inclination towards one particular businessman in this particular slide if you simply ask yourself or or you as a student wants to do job after your graduation if there are no any business entity if there are no businessmen there is no any business uh, activity in the country then there is definitely or absolutely no job opportunity in this country there is no value chain there is no economy and we will be another uh, african or a poor country like india so we should instead of celebrating say actor actresses of or say bollywood or hollywood whatsoever we should celebrate first those who are providing us an opportunity to earn something so first hero of our country should be businessmen entrepreneurs because of them economy is growing okay but there are certain things which are wrong uh, with uh, existing students uh those are called as a generation z okay so these are certain cultural issues okay students once they pass out from the college they do not have patience and long term visions they do not have a proper uh, documentation skill unko sab kuch cheeze whatsapp pe mil jata hai unko diary leke likhne ki aadat nahi hai fir kuch bolte to bolte bhul gaya they do not know how to uh, manage the data as informations they always think about themselves first then they think about society or say uh, or company so they are generally termed as a selfish and greedy with a narrow thinking they have a poor education and deep understanding of science when i say poor education that means it is not about degree students have a degree but they do not know have understanding of science and facts the biggest advantage of this particular generation or you students is that you are the most intelligent people you are the most intelligent species but the problem is that you are the laziest so you always look for the shortcuts of everything and the biggest disadvantage with our education system is that because of colonial and uh, uh, colonial mindset and uh, installed by uh, english people our education system is designed to produce clerks not leaders or not industrialists or not visionaries okay 
And these are not my words. You can see, uh, as an example, these are certain screenshots. They say that uh, Vion is a news channel. They said that Generation Z is the most difficult generation to work with as per report. These are certain Google News report. Okay. It is said that Generation Z is very difficult to work with. Okay. Now, the very purpose of presenting this here is that you must know what is wrong with you. And like uh, in the last presentation, Prasant sir said that if you want to be a successful, you need something. But you guys, if you cannot work with the team, if you do not have agility, like Prasant sir said in the last, uh, second last slide, what qualities you require. If you cannot work in the team, you do not have agility, you are not successful in the industry. So it is very much important. You know all these three. So Seva said that, we were together for more than six hours and Subman Gil and Prithvi so didn't ask me anything about cricket. So this is very big issue. When you have something, a veteran or a retired person in front of you, you should always discuss about your field. You should always take blessings and guidance and how can you excel in the field. But this is a big issue with uh, the, the young generation. Okay. And uh, then you can always think about this a success mantra. It's not about always IQ. You see, IQ is always a, about mug up the things, how you can mug up the things. So, it is a measure of only uh, ability to solve maths, memorize things and recall the lessons. That's it. But to be successful in life, be it a job, be it in a business, you need emotional quotient also. Emotional quotient means uh, ability to maintain peace with other to survive uh, emotional situation, to be honest, respect the boundaries, etc. Third thing is social quotient. Jo hum bolte na ki India mein uh, sabse anpad log hote hai, wo businessman bante hai, thik hai? Aur jo padhe likhe log hote hai, wo doctor bante hai, thik hai? Kyun? Kiki wo intelligent hote hai, fir wo politician ko paise dete. Aisa nahi hai, wo thik hai, baat aap kisi hai, lekin Politicians ke social quotient jada hai. Ability to build a network of friends and maintain it over a long period of time. Aaj agar humare prime minister hai ya chief minister hai road show karte hai, to kyun itna log jata hai dekhne ke liye? Hum road pe nikle to koi saamne bhi nahi dekhta ghur ke. Kyun? Kyunki we do not have social quotient. Humare paas social connectivity nahi hai. That's why successful people have a high social quotient, less intelligence. आप बोलोगे कि हमें प्राइम मिनिस्टर का डिग्री चाहिए चीफ मिनिस्टर का डिग्री चाहिए एमएलए का डिग्री चाहिए उनको डिग्री से लेना देना ही नहीं है बिकॉज़ दे आर नॉट देयर उनको आरएनडी नहीं करना है इंडस्ट्री में जाके वो वो लीडर्स है लास्ट वन इज एडवर्सिटी क्वोशंट मेजर ऑफ योर एबिलिटी टू गो थ्रू रफ पैच ऑफ लाइफ एंड कम आउट विदाउट लूजिंग योर माइंड ठीक है ना तो एडवर्स कंडीशन में आप अपने आप को कैसे बिहेव करते हो उसका देखना है आपको ठीक है तो अभी आप इसमें ऑब्जर्व करो कि कोई भी पॉलिटिशियन के ऊपर कितने भी बड़े दाग लगेंगे इंडिया की बात कर रहा हूं मैं ठीक है या बिजनेसमैन है चलो हम अदानी की बात करते हैं 6 7 महीने 8 महीने पहले अदानी के ऊपर एक बहुत बड़ा रिपोर्ट आया और उनके शेयर डाउन हो गए हमने अदानी को रोते हुए देखा नहीं देखा क्यों क्योंकि वो रफ कंडीशन को भी ओवरकम करने के लिए उनमें स्टेमिना है ठीक है ना अभी हम धीरूभाई अंबानी ने रिलायंस शुरू किया उनको जाके बोलो कि नाइलॉन 66 का केमिकल स्ट्रक्चर बताओ उनको नहीं पता है क्योंकि उनको मतलब ही नहीं है नाइलॉन 66 का स्ट्रक्चर पता है वो जाके आरएनडी करने वाले हैं उनकी कंपनी में ठीक है ना धीरूभाई अंबानी को तो एडवर्सिटी क्वोशंट ज्यादा है सोशल क्वोशंट ज्यादा है तो अगर आपको लाइफ में सक्सेसफुल होना है और आपको जॉब करना है तो आपके पास इंटेलिजेंट क्वोशंट हाई होना चाहिए लेकिन अगर आपको बिजनेस करना है या एंटरप्रेन्योर बनना है तो आपको इंटेलिजेंट क्वोशंट की जरूरत ही नहीं है आपको एडवर्सिटी क्वोशंट चाहिए आपको सोशल क्वोशंट चाहिए इसीलिए आप देखिएगा कि क्लास में जो नंबर 1 या नंबर 2 स्टूडेंट होते हैं वो बड़ी-बड़ी कंपनीज में आरएनडी में जाते हैं हेड बनते हैं और अच्छी पोजीशन में जाते हैं जो लास्ट बेंच में बैठे रहते हैं ना वो कुछ ना कुछ करके जॉब में बिजनेस में पॉलिटिक्स में चले जाते हैं बीच वालों का कुछ नहीं होता सो डोंट बी अ मीडियोकर आइदर बी एन इंटेलिजेंट पर्सन और बी एन अ पर्सन विद अ ग्रेट एडवर्सिटी एंड सोशल क्वोशंट ओके सो नॉर्मली आप जब पास आउट होंगे ना कॉलेज से तो आपको लगेगा कि मैं पास आउट होऊंगा और आपकी लाइफ एकदम स्मूथ होगी और आप रिटायर हो जाओगे बट ऐसा नहीं है इट इज नॉट अ डेस्टिनेशन करियर इज नॉट अ डेस्टिनेशन करियर इज अ जर्नी टू क्रिएट वैल्यू नेम एंड फ्रेम और इसमें लाइफ में बहुत उतार चढ़ाव आएंगे यू हैव टू बी अ पेशेंट यू हैव टू फेस दोस सिचुएशन यू शुड हैव अ हायर एडवर्सिटी क्वेश्चन एंड देन यू गो थ्रू विथ इट 
ठीक है ये क्या बहुत ही फेमस पोएम है आपने सुनी होगी मंजिल तो मिल ही जाएगी भटकते ही सही गुमराह तो वो है जो घर से निकले ही नहीं खुशियां मिल ही जाएगी एक दिन रोते ही सही कमजोर दिल के वो है जो हंसने की सोचते ही नहीं डॉक्टर वर्गीज के हिसाब से पूरे होंगे हर वो ख्वाब जो देखते हैं अंधेरी रातों में ना समझ तो वो है जो डर से पूरी रात सुनते ही नहीं मंजिल मिल ही जाएगी एक दिन भटकते ही सही ठीक है सो अगर आपको कुछ कार लेनी है तो आपको सपना देखना पड़ेगा और उसके पीछे मेहनत पड़ेगी ठीक है जॉब हो या बिजनेस हो सो इट ऑल स्टार्ट्स विथ ड्रीम और खत्म भी वही होता है क्योंकि डॉक्टर वर्गीज कुरियन ने भी कहा था आई टू हैड अ ड्रीम ठीक है और ये वन ऑफ द हाइस्ट सेलिंग बुक है ठीक है सो दिस इज अबाउट अ वेरी क्रिस्प एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड ऑन्टरप्रिन्योरशिप अगेन आई एम सेइंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट इज नॉट पॉसिबल अनलेस वी हैव सफिशिएंट नंबर ऑफ ऑन्टरप्रिन्योर्स दैट्स इट अगेन हैप्पी नेशनल मिल्क डे जय भारत जय हिंद थैंक यू वेरी मच thank you so much sir your presentation was really very interesting and it was very insightful now we have come to the end of this insightful journey so if we, anyone have any questions they can directly ask in the chat box or in the physical mo mode you can ask from uh, from your seat all itself if you not had any question thank you sanket sir for your uh, very uh, very nice presentation uh, definitely our student is benefited with your presentation thank you sir uh, soon we will meet in physical mode to you uh, still thank you sir so uh, this is come to end of this uh, webinar or uh, seminar so uh, we felicitate uh, our uh, speaker and uh, uh, guest today in physical mode but uh, the the guest they are present on online mode we we send them the certificate and memento through courier uh, here we have uh, chairman of ida and keynote speaker of industry session uh, academia session uh, i invite uh, uh, dr arvin sir uh, for felicitation and i invite professor dwari sir for felicitation of uh, dr arvin now i invite uh, dr tarun verma sir secretary ida and uh, our guest of honor for today's program i invite professor dwari sir for felicitation of <laughs> tarun sir as well thank you sir arima so now we have come to this in insightful journey i would like to call mr sunil meena who is the assistant professor of dsft department for the vote of thanks we are seeing some questions in chat box uh, there is no question okay thank you mel is there there is no question okay so uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining us through physical and virtual mode uh, this uh, pro program i say very successful program as far as uh, registration seat i see uh, in, in very recent uh, time there is uh, about 280 registration we received uh, in this seminar and uh, nearly 
70 to 80 participants joined in physical mode and I seeing 107 and this data goes up to 130 in online mode, virtual mode. So uh, I see as far as participation, see this is the most successful program. Our speakers was uh, very uh, good. We covered three aspects that is academia, industry and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, that was covered very, very, very detailed and uh, very uh, good manner. So this is the time to uh, say thanks to our uh, uh, organizer and association uh, uh, association partners. So this program is organized by ISA, that is uh, the uh, the uh, uh, major uh, union of agriculture students at situate its headquarters at New Delhi. So this is the uh, uh, this is organized by ISA in association of uh, Department of Dairy Science and Food Technology, Swartz Allahabad or Piyagraj uh, and Galgotia University and IDA UP Eastern Chapter. So I would thanks to uh, I would be thankful to uh, Professor John David sir who is a dean of uh, Swartz Allahabad. Uh, sir is brief, brief us about the the Indian dairy industry and role of Pakistani Korean in uh, Indian dairy industry. So we are very thankful to John David sir. Uh, when we were this program, ko finalize kar rahe the, to John David sir se meri pehli baat baat hui, to sir ne bada, hume positive response diya ki our, our organization is with you. And we are seeing ki hume Swart se kapi achhe registration mile hain. Nearly more than 50 registration we received from Swart. That is a very big contribution to our seminar. So, uh, so Swart is a very uh, key, key organization that uh, make this uh, event very successful. Then uh, we would uh, thank you to Professor Anil Kumar Chawan, sir, head Department of Dairy Science and Food Technology. Sir, provide us the uh, various uh, facilities uh, that include this Kamdenu Halls. Through this, we, we uh, stream this uh, uh, seminar in physical mode. And this this seminar this webinar convert to seminar through through this Kamden hall. So we are thankful to Anil Kumar Chawan sir, and uh, that result you all got a certificate of seminar, not webinar. Uh, then uh, I thank push to uh, Sach Deva sir. Uh, he is a chief policy advisor ISA and dean uh, Galgotia University Noida. Uh, sir, provide us the very, very uh, valuable inputs for organization of this event. Uh, he's, he's contributed a lot in designing of brochure and suggested a key modification. And we received good amount of registration from Galgotia University. Uh, Galgotia University offers uh, various degrees in in field of agriculture through School of Agriculture. So we are thankful to School of Agriculture, Galgotia University. Then we are uh, we are thankful to uh, IDA UP Eastern Chapter. That is a very 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 uh, popular chapter of IDA because the event organized by UP uh, Eastern Chapter that was very popular at headquarter IDA. And these news are published in 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 their uh, Indian Dairymen regularly. And uh, this is the most successful chapter that organized uh, uh, huge I mean very huge event every year. And and uh, as as far as Arvind sir suggests, they are organizing one program on thirtieth uh, uh, of this month. So I request all the physical and uh, uh, virtual participant, please participate in that program and make it that uh, that program successful as well. Uh, in in addition of we are thankful to uh, the the key functionary of IDA uh, ISA ISA uh, that include our national president Vivek Sorab. Uh, he is uh, uh, doing his research in in IRI. I would I I also thankful to our UP State President uh, Asmit Sukla. He is uh, the one of the uh, one of the uh, key key responsible person for this uh, organization of this seminar. In addition of this, uh, we we associate this program with uh, several co-organizing secretary uh, that that include. Uh, MPUT Udaipur. Uh, from MPUT, we we have received uh, support of uh, Dr. Kamlesh Kumar Meena sir. From Swartz, we received uh, support of Priyabrat Gautam. From Mapsu, uh, we received uh, support of Anand V. Dhotre sir. From Kamdenu University, we received uh, support of uh, Ravi Prajapati sir. 
from icar uh, central institute of agriculture engineering we received support of samlesh kumari from kamdenu university we have received support of dr subrato hathi from rajiv gandhi uh, central university we have received support of uh, ashok kumar yadav sir from uh, jodhpur agriculture university we have received uh, support of dr rekha rani ma'am from west Bo west bengal university uh, that is uh, agriculture uh, dairy technology college we have received support of uh, partha pradeep devnath from uh, mizoram university we have received support of manish kumar from uh, uh, rajasthan sig uh, uh, sk n a u uh, we have received support of dr arvind kumar in addition of this i am thankful to our organizing team uh that that uh, our organizing committee include all the students from phd from ug from pg uh from these all association partners that include swarts uh, galgotia university our department dsft so uh this program is organized with the support and uh, blessings of all these uh the all these uh, speakers and uh, our organizing partner comes to the the uh, webinar uh, speaker or lecture uh, part our first speaker is dr arvin sir arvin sir is brief about the the novel processing techniques that are used in in in, in food industry and the a, the work they are carried out in in the at bhu so they are doing very good work in 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 promoting the indigenous cow breed because the indigenous cow breed is a breed that 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 helps us in in maintaining the continuous growth in in dairy sector so that 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 is very key insightful of that uh, of lecture from dr arvin our next speaker uh, from industry section uh, dr prasant uh, mr prasant bhat from mother dairy he is brief about the what, what type of r and d need uh, r and d uh, a project we need to take up in in uh, food and dairy industry to to meet uh, meet the continuous growth and uh, to to uh, to cover all aspect of consumer next uh, our last speaker from entrepreneur section uh, entrepreneurship section uh, covered by dr sanket borad he is a very dynamic person uh, he is is a technical director of flavi uh, uh, consultancy firm and flavi doing several project in india and as well as in foreign country so uh, the lecture of uh, dr sanket uh, borad was very insightful so this is what uh, we have covered uh, this uh, seminar and uh, we are again thankful to all our association partner our speaker our organizing team and and the participant they are playing very important role in in, in successful of this program uh, some some announcement i have for physical and virtual uh, participant as you aware that we have uh, segregated the uh, certification part into e certificate and physical certificate so e certificate we provide through email and physical certificate is provided through courier so anyone is left with the uh, anyone participant who register has a physical participation certificate please provide the complete address to us और वी आर कॉन्टेक्टिंग टू यू हम हमने लगभग 120 लोगों का कलेक्ट कर लिया है पर आप अगर किसी का मिसिंग है आपकी डिटेल नहीं ली गई है तो आप वो हमारे साथ शेयर कर सकते हैं और ई सर्टिफिकेट में ई uh, मेल आप इंश्योर कर लें कि आ, आपका ई मेल सही हो अगर आपको कन्फर्मेशन मेल नहीं आया तो प्लीज कॉन्टेक्ट टू अस ताकि हम आपको सर्टिफिकेट डिलीवर कर सकें so with this words i am thankful to all participant our organizing partner and organizing committee member thank you thank you everyone and congratulations to our uh, all the part participant uh, we will end this uh, web seminar here with thanks to all thank you